to realms that we cannot even begin to imagine right mm. now. So I understand when I talk about these kind of issues, I understand immediately when people go, oh. I absolutely understand. Yeah. Because what I'm talking about here is not something that is currently within the framework of people's thought process. Mm. And, and these guys know this as well. Yeah. I mean, the Quero know this. And they say that, you know, whatever occurs, maybe some people will unfortunately not be able to deal with it and they'll actually have a heart attack mm. just because what ha what's happening is, is so scary for them. But when you say deal with it, oh, what are we talking here? Are we talking about a spiritual or physical or... Who knows? So, yeah, so it's thing in the air. Who knows? I mean, you know, what they're saying is that where we've got to try and get ourselves to, the preparation that we can do for ourselves yes. is reach a point where we have no attachment Period. Yeah. No attachment to anything physical mm. and no attachment to any particular outcome. Mm. So, I mean, I mean to um, <laughs> revert to biblical, if you like, I mean, Jesus said, uh, or was uh, reported to have said, it is easier for a rich man to walk through the eye of a needle than it is to enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm. Well, the Quero, in a, in a sort of perhaps um, a slightly different way, I say much the same thing. Mm. Because when I asked them, you know, is this opportunity going to be available to everybody? Actually, they laughed initially. And they said, uh, you know, well, yes, it is going to be available to everybody, but not everybody will take it. And I said, well, why, why not? And they said, because some people will say, oh, uh, I've just got to go and get my iPod yes. or my phone or my computer or my wallet um, or whatever. Yeah. And, and the opportunity is gone. But, you know, they were saying this sort of fairly lightheartedly yeah. because where we actually reached, um, if you like, a... a an understanding um, was that really what they're saying is that right now we have an opportunity to prepare for whatever it is mm -hmm. which we don't know and that preparation is the key element because ultimately, ultimately the decision mm -hmm. is not going to be taken here mm -hmm. the decision is going to be taken here. Well what you're talking about is a spiritual awakening to be spiritually aware to find out who we are and connect to our higher self or yeah. the universal mind yes and some people are on that path some people will never wake up to that path. And some people may wake up in literally the last few nanoseconds. Yeah. And in fact, Robert Anton Wilson um, and Terence McKenna both made uh, very similar observations some you know, 20, 30 years ago. Mm. I mean, McKenna said that, uh, you know, as this time wave zero accelerates, mm. then, you know, 90% of uh, our awakening occurs in the last 17 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, many others have said, I mean, I remember another great uh, person probably very few people have heard of, but a wonderful guy called Stanley Messenger, mm. um, who'd been on this journey for, he's in his 80s now, he'd been on this journey for sort of 50, 60 years. And he says that, you know, the greatest challenge for a lot of people who have been on the journey is going to be able to embrace those who come on board at the last minute. Mm. Because, you know, the natural reaction is going to be to say, you know, hang on a second, I've busted my butt <laughs> to do this for 60 years, and, you know, you're getting the same privileges after doing it. For, yeah. you know. And he said, look, it's irrelevant. Yeah. You know, our challenge, those of us that have any kind of insight mm. into what may or may not occur, mm. um, but our challenge is to provide, if you like, a, a safety net mm. Um, that gives people who come over to this realization, even at the last fraction of a second, yeah. but that we embrace them and bring them through with us. Because you know, there is an opportunity here, ultimately, for the whole of humanity yeah. to make this step together. But that comes down to obviously each individual, and there's a hell of a lot to ha that can happen and will happen, I think, in the coming months and years. Well, and what, you mentioned October. 2011 as a kind of focal point, a starting point for this. Yeah. Why are you so kind of specific on that day? Well, I, the only reason I mention that is because, I mean, one, the Quero said that the process, the solar storms, the solar flares, the solar activity, really starts to accelerate to new highs as of October 2011. And the uh, process continues right through to uh, the middle of 2013. Mm. Um, so 20, 2012, it's that bang in the middle of it, December, it is, yeah. Because some people believe that we're actually, we've actually come into this, if you want to call it the photon belt. It's been happening for the last 13 years, yeah. and that we're actually near enough coming to the middle of it. And that 2012 or the 21st December, I don't know why you picked that certain date, I think it's more of a, a my own thing, that that's when it's going to, that's when things are going to start changing for the better. Things will start changing early, as you say, October 2011. 
this is yeah. what some people believe. So I don't know. Yeah, I think it, well, I mean, um, um, you know, whether it's um, the, the, well, the photon belt, the realm wave, I mean, there's a lot of names that I mean, it's all very similar. And, you know, I mean, I, I know that, you know, right now I'd say that there's a lot of people who are going to wake up on December 22nd, 2012, and then five minutes after they wake up, they'll be dead because they, they've got such an existential commitment to something happening on that day. Yeah. Or well, 22nd, I should say, 22nd yeah. December. And if nothing's happened, they're going to go, oh, fuck. Yeah. Right, you know, because yeah. whatever it was they were committed to yeah. hasn't occurred. But, you know, consider the other extreme which is that December the 21st, 2012, for example, could simply be the tipping point. It could be the point at which the majority of humanity mm. has embraced the new level of awareness, if you yeah. like. And then, you know, there's 49% there's of humanity that are still to, uh, you know, make that transition, if you like. Mm. And that's just the tipping point, it's the fulcrum. Mm. And, the, and the process continues. Um, so I wouldn't be, I wouldn't fall out of my chair if nothing happens, mm. neither would I fall out of my chair if something incredible happens. I'm completely open. So do you believe that the, 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 um, the, weather, uh, 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 the weather conditions that we're experiencing globally at the moment are all natural? Or do you believe that it's, uh, some are natural and some are man-made, i.e. the harp? I mean, I don't know for sure, but I, I would say that we know that the weather modification technology exists. Um, you know, there are many references to weather modification technology uh, within um, you know, think tank papers. Tesla uh, technology. Tesla technology, yeah. exactly. So I would suggest that you know, most likely what's occurring is a combination of natural and manipulated. Those who think that they are the rightful rulers of the planet are very well aware of everything that I have been discussing here for the last few minutes. Mm -hmm. And they've actually been aware of it for much longer than we have. And they're doing everything within their power to try and stall the awakening and at the same time accelerate their agenda for subjugation and population reduction. Which is speeding up. Absolutely. I've, I've seen such a speed between 2000 and then. Uh, it's just since accelerated. It's just. It's, it's logarithmic. Yeah. Since 9 11, then the agenda has just become logarithmic. Yeah. It's, it's incredible the yes. speed, you know. Um, as, as to where we're going to go, you talked earlier just briefly on a thing called the hidden agenda. Is that something that you can elaborate on? Uh, I have, I'm going to have to say the hidden agenda is uh, it's actually a presentation that I, ref I made four and a half years ago in um, the middle of 2006. And I talk about the deep occult belief system of those who believe themselves to be the rightful rulers of the planet. And, and I, I'm just going to have to say that uh, uh, that's available on DVD. Okay. It's called The Hidden Agenda, and it's on enrcrane.co.uk. So as a teaser, basically, you're probably going to cover the, the, the one world religion which they want, which is going to be satanic, yes. luciferian, and things that have well, I think we have to avoid getting hung up on dogmatic names. Okay. Because I think that, you know, keep, to refer to something as a luciferic, aramanic, whatever, mm -hmm. antichrist, mm -hmm is falling into the trap of attaching labels that they've given us. Yes. Yeah, you know? Yeah. So, look, fundamentally, fundamentally, what it needs to come down to is the question we need to ask, first of all ourselves, is our attitude, is our agenda benign and benevolent mm. towards humanity? Mm. Once we are confident that our own um, agenda our own attitude, our own um, life is, uh, is service to others, based on service to others, yeah. then we move to the next step, which is then to start to look at those around us. Mm -hmm. And if we, if we are genuinely motivated in terms of you know, what we do is for the wider mm -hmm. good, not just, exactly. not just I, myself, me, Karma. greed, 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 yeah. help each other, help each other, be selfless, rather and then than selfish. We will draw those other people to us. Yeah. I mean, and this event that we're at here, the uh, the Truth Agenda with Sovereign Independent, is a wonderful example mm -hmm. of that, where like-minded people, you know, are coming together. And there may be some exceptions in the room. You know, yeah. I hope they're educated, yeah. um, and that they take something away from it. But what we will find, I think, is as we move down that agenda we will find that we don't attract people to us who are counter to that agenda. Yeah. And if we do, mm -hmm. then we will have sufficient comfort 
uh, and confidence to be able to deal with it accordingly and you know move away from yeah. those people because everybody has their you know their role well, to play in this. I think science has proven that uh, positive people are attracted to positive people and the people who are not relevant to what we're doing will actually fall by, by the wayside or else sure. not be interested. I mean even to the extent of um, I mean you know we're not talking about anything that's special here and I mm. certainly don't I mean um, I don't want to get into any kind of perception of sort of spiritual one-upmanship mm. because you know no, it's energy it's energy it's, it's energy. attraction of energy exactly yeah. and so you know what we find is that yeah, people will find this for themselves they can clear a room yeah you know if there's somebody they really need to talk to and they want to talk to that person in some degree of privacy mm. you know once they put out that subconscious intent what they'll find is that they create the space for yeah. it yeah. And there'll be, you know, people leave them alone. Likewise, if this, um, like my experience with the Quero, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're going to something with very positive intent and you want to meet with somebody, then you don't have to worry too much about the mechanics as to how it's going to happen. Yeah. The intent will somehow make it happen. Well, okay. Now, we can debate the actual technology of how that happens until the cows come home, and I'm sure we would have a very enjoyable discussion. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how people perceive the technology to work. Mm. All we need to know is that it works mm. and say thank you very much. Mm. It's like a, you know most of the technology on the physical realm. Most people don't know how a phone works. Mm. You know they, they know. Don't need to know they don't works. need to know exactly. Yeah. All they need is that when they mm. you know switch it on, dial a number, they can connect through. And what we're talking about here is just being able to do something similar, perhaps, yeah. but without the uh, catalyst, the interface. And we had this ability. It was kind of Absolutely. over time taken away from us. We got Absolutely. more reliant on the system. Yeah. And this is what we need to do is go back to who we were. Well, you know, and a lot of the things that occur are part of, I mean, even, uh, I'll give you one example. Um, even little things like the calculator mm. is designed to start shutting us down. Mm. So it shuts down that intellectual capacity to be able to do the, you know, the mental arithmetic, yeah. if you like. Things like sat-navs. Mm. Sat-nav is part of a shutting down process, mm. you know, because if, if people become reliant on sat-nav, I mean, consider the possibility that within a generation, if there's a breakdown of the satellite networks, people can get in the car and they're just not going to be able to go anywhere. <laughs> because they absolutely have lost the ability and the confidence to be able to even put the keys in the ignition without the sat-nav telling them where to go. Mm. So, you know, we've actually got to start taking, that's why I don't have a sat-nav here, why I, I try to still practice my mental arithmetic skills. Mm. One of the skills I notice that I have lost is the ability to produce decent handwriting yeah. because I use a keyboard all the time. Yeah. So once again, consider the possibility that you know we're not too many generations away if we could keep going down this path where we have lost the right the ability to actually produce handwriting mm. we've lost the muscular yeah but we don't teach it we yeah. just teach people to use a keyboard mm. and then once the those interfaces are taken away from us we're screwed two or three more generations and we're done yeah so that's why you know we, we mm. must take a look at uh, you know what's occurring and yeah. um, and actually start to return to the natural and embrace the natural competencies that we have. And of course, this is what the Quero, amongst others, are talking about when they talk about the solar storms potentially triggering the reactivation of what we have been told is junk DNA. Plus the fact that uh, these solar storms, uh, it's been talked about, I think it's like they're called EMF, it's the electromechanical interference which will affect electromagnetic. Electro electromagnetic, which will affect electronic devices anyway. Yes. And, and we are, we are ostensibly an electronic device. In, yeah, in, yeah. In, but wiping out technology as well, or absolutely. Fact, making them like null and void, basically, you won't be able to use them. We won't, uh, but on the other side, maybe we don't need them. Even if they're yeah. there, yeah. maybe we don't need them. Yeah. You know, because consider the possibility mm -hmm. that one of the um, uh, parts of components, the DNA that's reawakened, is our ability to tune into each other's thoughts. Yeah. Which, again, is something that we've lost. Absolutely. And I know there's tribes in Africa that still do that. Well, they use the trees. Yeah. You know, and um, <laughs> wonderfully, I mean, not just Africa, but, uh, you know, when I was in um, uh, Central America uh, 10 years ago, and um, some of the local people that I used to stay with, and uh, um, there was one old lady, she was in her 60s, and uh, you know, she had the ability. Her husband went shopping. I, one, I remember one specific example, and um, she said, oh, I meant to tell him to get some washing powder. And I said, well, phone him. And she said, no, he hasn't got the phone with him. She said, but I'm going to tell the trees. 